Hey, what's up? This is Hunter Nelson with Tortoise and Hare Software, and I'm here with you with a few takeaways from the IT Expo 2021 down in Miami, Florida that I attended last week, and uh, just here to share a few tips um, and takeaways that I took from the conference uh, that can help MSPs out with selling their services, understanding what's trending in the market, etc. So without further ado, let's dive in. Uh, first of all, the first takeaway I had is that MSPs are not selling the benefits of Microsoft Teams nearly enough. Uh, and I know that we're at the kind of tail end of the pandemic, recovery mode, etc. Um, so people are starting to get more back in office, but that doesn't necessarily mean that ch uh, chat software or Microsoft Teams is really going away. Um, and there are a lot of people that are kind of uh, still trying to understand how to best use Teams. They're trying to see how Teams can replace email. Uh, increase increase collaboration. There's all sorts of new integrations being built for Microsoft Teams almost constantly. So Teams is just becoming more and more of a central part of how people work, and has nearly 87% of uh, penetration amongst employees in the U.S. marketplace. So uh, definitely a big ups or big chance to sell um, managed services and IT support. Um, one other thing on that note, um, with that nearly 87% penetration, uh, I had a note here that only 5% of companies have voice-enabled teams. So with uh, teams becoming more important uh, and a more important part of how people are working, um, there's going to be more companies, and there already are, that are moving to using teams as a soft phone solution. So if you are looking for a way to have a better conversation with your customers as an MSP, one good way to do that is just to uh, tell them uh, or ask them if they want to talk about how they can voice enable Teams, uh, you know, con consolidate some services there and kind of uh, start leveraging Teams as a you know, telecom provider as well as like a, a chat solution. Um, Okay, next tech takeaway here um, is that, you know, with the ongoing growth of kind of cloud migrations, coupled with that recent uh, pipeline hack that, uh, um, you know, brought the Southeast to a grinding halt, there's just increasing awareness of need for cybersecurity help and solutions from MSPs. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, we as consumers uh, get conditioned to say, I'm like, oh, you know, my email was taken. Oh, my email was taken. Uh, like, we're all getting an email in our inbox, at, you know, once a month that some retailer that we did business with has been hacked, compromised, and we've kind of become uh, numb to it a little bit. Um, but, you know, with the pipeline going down, that was a real resonating message. And, um, you know, I think increased awareness and, you know, added a little bit more fear in the marketplace as far as like not having that cybersecurity and the impacts that can have. So, you know, the there's more awareness at the SMB level of a need for cybersecurity services. So, you know, kind of take advantage of that gold rush and, you know, continue to develop your cybersecurity marketing collateral and offerings and um, you know, now is a good time. I know a lot of MSPs struggle to cy sell cybersecurity, and a lot of uh, SMBs have a risk tolerance for it. But you know, awareness is growing, the need is growing, so uh, definitely be on the lookout there. Uh, next take takeaway: uh, one thing I was kind of surprised at is just the number of MSPs and companies that attended the conference that have either pivoted to a SaaS company or have like a side software product that's just built off some sort of back integration between two software products that they were making available in like the cloud marketplaces, Azure, AWS, GCP. Um, so, you know, that takeaway there is that there's just a ton of opportunity to put those scripts and utilities you have written to do some of the tasks that, you know, you do on a day-to-day -day basis as far as moving documents, uh, making systems talk to each other, etc to work as a software product uh, and kind of enter a new market for those companies that have the appetite for risk. And you can build a multi-million multi dollar SaaS product that no one has ever heard of uh, if you play your cards right. So definitely make sure you're taking inventory of those backend scripts utilities and look for ways to turn those into a product with an easy distribution channel like those cloud marketplaces. 
All right, uh, next takeaway. Uh, most MSPs, they're still struggling when it comes to sales and marketing and rely almost entirely on referrals, especially at the smaller level. Of course, some of the bigger MSPs have kind of bridged that gap. Um, but, you know, this is just kind of a thing that, you know, if you're an MSP owner, you got to keep, keep an eye on. There's just like crazy technological growth right now. And it's kind of one of those situations where a rising tide floats all ships and in a growth industry as strong as like the technology industry right now it's allowing people to get away with something that they're they should be paying more attention to um so if you're not uh paying adequate attention to sales and marketing a uh, great opportunity to reach out to us here at tortoise and hair software and talk about how you can get started with that um next next takeaway there is an enormous chasm between kind of the top and bottom of the market in the msp space even at the local level and what's interesting is the big MSPs will tell you uh, themselves, the difference is rarely in the skill of the in-house technicians. And the difference between a big MSP and a large M and a smaller MSP usually re relates more so to uh, standard operating procedures, executing them, and really sales and marketing like we just talked about, but also hiring, having those processes to bring on new techs. And you know, when you get to a 50 person company or greater, there's just natural employee churn that's happening constantly, um, or not constantly, but you know it's, it's happening regular enough that you, you have to onboard uh, people um, that will leave for non-performance reasons or non-fit reasons. You know they might move across the country, decide they want to go, they like time in office, you know things like that, uh, decide the MSP world is not for them, etc. So you know having a way to bring in new clients to keep keep your you know revenue. Um, healthy and bring on new employees to help service those clients, keep the clients happy, prevent churn, etc. Um, and building the processes and procedures and keeping that knowledge base uh, together is, you know, one of the biggest differences between the larger and the smaller MSPs. So, if you're on that growth trajectory, it's good good area of focus. Um, next to wait takeaway is that most MSP customers don't really know what their provider is actually doing, um, which, you know, that's something we see in the marketing side too, and it's fair, but, uh, you know, it's important to kind of bridge that gap because you need to be communicating the value that you're delivering. Um, good example is, uh, you know, one thing um, I do is when I complete website maintenance for uh, clients here, I send an email every month. Um, you know, it's just a way to keep in contact and communicate the value that you're providing. So, you know, if you've done, I know a lot of MSPs are doing like quarterly business review, but you can find an opportunity at least monthly to just send an update on uh, what it is that you've done. Have you uh, verified system integrity? Have you restored from backup and made sure that their disaster recovery exercise is complete? You know, just send your clients an update on what you're doing every month and um, what the value of that those activities are. Um, so that can help them start to learn more about it and uh, can help you when it comes time to renegotiate and renew those contracts. Um, and then the last takeaway here is just that the line between IT companies and software companies continues to blur. Um, infrastructure is starting to be designed as code um, and there's just, you know, MSPs uh, need more kind of coding resources in house and uh, software companies uh, need to understand infrastructure better. So this is a good opportunity to either partner or, you know, my, my thought is maybe those companies are going to start to blend together into one entity more so in the future. Um, so uh, interesting to trend to keep an eye on. Um, so that's it. Those were some takeaways from the IT Expo in Miami. Uh, are you seeing any of these trends? If so, let us know in the comments below. Anything that we've left out, let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, and thank you for watching.